Okay, well, welcome back to part two. Um, so at, as of this point, with regard to being able to examine the association between variables, uh, we've looked at the use of scatter plots as a visual way of examining those associations. Okay, and then we've looked at the correlation coefficient as a numerical way of not only getting a feel for the direction of the trend, but also a strength of the association. Now we're going to look at a technique that we can actually use to make use of um, these associations. Okay, and that's something called regression analysis. Uh, it's based on the correlation. Um, if you were to do the formula, and by the way, you don't do formulas in this class, but if you were to do, you'd actually notice the formulas would actually be very similar. But one of the things that regression analysis does is that it uses the information that we know about the correlation between two variables to actually begin to allow us to make predictions. So this is sort of a predictive analysis. Um, and whether you know it or not, regression analysis is really behind a lot of things that we do. So, for example, um, salaries are oftentimes determined by regression analysis um, within HR units. Um, your uh, insurance premiums are based on uh, regression analysis. Okay, just to sort of name a few, and there are many, many other things uh, um, um, that are based on this concept of regression analysis. Um, and data analytics, sometimes this might be called something like forecast analysis, but it's really all about making predictions. And hopefully as you work through this chapter, you'll begin to see how this in fact might be running in the background. Okay, so let's get to it. Uh, so basically what regression analysis does is it produces something called the regression equation. Um, sometimes this is called the regression line because essentially it is the equation um, for drawing a straight line. Okay, and so what I want to do is break this equation down for you so you can have a sense of what it is that we're trying to do. Okay, so this first thing here, um, the y uh, um, apostrophe, um, is what we call the predicted value, right? So in the prediction, this is the variable that we're trying to predict, okay? And what this form is saying is that this predicted value is going to be equal to this a thing here, something we call the y-intercept. Okay, now we're going to come back to the y-intercept and talk about what it is uh, um, a little bit more directly here, um, but it's one of the two um, important things that the um, formula does. Okay, uh, this thing here, um, the little b, is something called the slope. Sometimes it's called the regression coefficient, um, but essentially it's the slope of the line. And then the final piece here, the little x, that's the predictor, right? So that's the variable that we're trying to use in order to predict the predicted value over there, okay? And so essentially what the formulas um, do in regression analysis is they basically produce this y-intercept and this slope. And of course, the slope is sort of very important, so we're going to talk about these two things starting with the slope, okay? So interpreting the slope. So the slope is denoted as small b, okay? Um, and sometimes people refer to it as the rise and run of the line, right? So in a minute, we'll sort of take a look at graphically what the regression line looks like, um, but it's essentially the rise and run of the line. A more practical interpretation of it, though, is that whatever that b number becomes, right? Uh, the way you interpret it is it's the amount of increase in the predicted value. Okay, once again, that's that y apostrophe when the predictor variable is increased by one, right? So for every increase in the predictor variable, the x variable, right? That's how much you can expect your predicted value to also increase, okay? And this will make a little more sense when we look at the example here in a minute. But that's basically what the slope is, okay? Um, you can also think of the slope as the angle, right? I mean, that's essentially what a slope is. Um, and so it's the angle of that line as well. But practically speaking, um, the rise and run is how you might interpret it. So what is this y-intercept thing? Well, basically, the y-intercept is the value of y when x is 0, okay? So practically, what are we saying? So remember, x is the predictor variable, right? So when the predictor variable is 0, what would you expect y to be? 
Okay, uh, um, and in a somewhat more practical sense, you'll see this in a minute. It's basically where the regression line starts. Okay, um, and normally it starts at the value of x at zero. Okay, um, and so. As it turns out, you can use the slope and the y-intercepts to really kind of help you interpret a lot about your data, but there's some limitations here, okay? Some cautions, if you will. One is that you should use the y-intercept to interpret the data only when it makes sense to have a value of zero for x, right? If we're talking about something like the number of pencils, right, if that's what x would be, then zero makes sense because it would reflect absence or no pencils. But if we're talking about something like a personality, right, even though you may think you've dated some zero personalities out there, uh, the reality is, is that really no one has a zero personality. So in that case, a zero y-intercept would not make sense, okay? Um, the calculated y-intercept value is meaningful. In other words, you're actually using a scale that makes sense here. Um, and then the data includes values equal to or close to zero. Once again, the zero needs to make sense in order for you to use this. All right, so let's kind of work with something here. Um, so let's suppose that we have a situation where what we'd like to do is see if we can predict right, the amount of revenue per day that we could make based on the monthly expenditures on advertising, okay? Uh, and so generally what we would do is we would go out and maybe gather some data, okay? Data um, from, let's say, other entities out there, and we would collect information both on how much um, ad revenue, okay, um, they, um, they're, they're monthly ad expenses, okay? And then we would look at the revenue that they make per day, okay? So that's essentially what our dots are representing here. And it produces this regression equation, right? So this is our predicted revenue. So this would be that Y apostrophe thing equal 1.8 here would be the Y intercept. Right? And just to go back, it's where this line begins, right? So when X is zero, right, this is where that Y intercept is, which practically speaking says, where do we begin drawing our line, okay? Um, and then plus 1.2, right, this would be the slope, okay? And once again, it's the angle of this line or the rise and run of the line. Okay? Um, and then where the X would be, this is just simply the amount of, of advertising. So once again, our question is, can we use the amount that we spend on advertising to predict the revenue per day um, that we'll make? Of course, you can see why that'd be an important thing, right? Uh, spending money on advertisements isn't just something you do, you know, off the top of your head, you know, there really ought to be a justification to it. So once again, you can see how regression analysis would be even behind something like uh, um, dollars, right? There's a reason why, you know, uh, commercials on the Super Bowl costs, you know, you know, $1.5 million or something like that, something ludicrous, okay? So, so let's work with this. So let's suppose that we wanted to basically know Okay, so we've got 500 bucks in our budget that we could spend on ads. And so we'd like to know. So, you know, if we spent $500 per month on ads, what would be the predicted amount of revenue per day, right, that we could get? So this looks like a case for regression analysis. And of course, that's what we got. So how will we use this formula to predict that? Well, um, right now, our numbers are kind of actually put into uh tenths units. So these are basically expenses in the hundreds. So got to keep that in mind. So in this case, $500 would be a unit of five. Okay. So essentially this is actually 180. That's 120. That's 500, but we're reflecting them in units like that. So, um, so all we would need to do is take whatever predictor amount is in this case, 500, put it in our formula. The formula says multiply the five times the slope first. Okay. Then it add it to the y-intercept, and that gives you your predicted amount. So how will we interpret this? Right, the company's daily revenue is predicted to be approximately seven hundred and eighty dollars 
when it spends $500 per month on ads, okay? which is not bad because remember that's a daily revenue, right? Um, and this is a one-time expenditure per month. So um, probably de definitely worth your while. Okay, so that's a use of regression. Um, let's look at some other things here in terms of making better sense of kind of what the slope and the y-intercept are telling us. So the slope here, once again, is 120. Um, so what does that say? Remember, we interpret this before. If x is increased by 1, right, y has an average increase of 1.2. So in that sense, for every $100, remember that's what 1 would be in X language, the company spends on ads, it's going to average an additional $120 in revenue per day. Okay. Um, so that's how we might interpret that particular data. Let's look at the Y-intercept here. So Y-intercept is um, 1.8, which remember that's 180. So it says basically if the company spends no money on advertising, right? That's what zero would be here, okay? Um, uh, then on average, it's predicted to have a daily revenue of about $180, right? So if it didn't advertise at all, you could expect it to make about $180 um, per day. So you can think of that as kind of like your baseline. And that's what a y-intercept is pretty good for, right? Kind of tells you what the baseline is, and so therefore, given what we know about the slope, right, for every $100 spent per month, you can expect an additional $120 to this baseline per day. Okay? So hopefully you have a feel for how uh, regression analysis can be really helpful. Okay, so that's all um, for this lecture. Um, feel free, once again, to contact me should you have any questions, but otherwise, happy reading. Bye-bye.